Another type of spell is View Resources, which is an adventure spell. You either have Adventure, which you cast on the main map, or Combat Spells. There's also sawmills and other types of resource generating buildings. This gives us two wood a day. This gem mine gives us gems every day, etc. Here's a gold mine, a thousand gold per day. Very beneficial. One of the fun things about this game is all the different types of resources. Here we're getting gold and sulfur. You can find artifacts. Nice feature, you right click on it and it tells you what it does. The developers thought of just about everything in this game. We can view the hero and it shows our artifacts at the bottom of the screen. There's an observation tower which allows us to see more of the map. Gets rid of the darkness. There's also creature generating buildings such as this halfling hole. Bottom right corner of the screen shows us we just got halflings to join us and in this case orcs. The map's also scattered with all kinds of enemies. These are stationary and it's up to you to choose when or how you want to fight them. Here we're attacking a bunch of peasants which are the weakest creature in the game. The hero's options are to either cast a spell, retreat, or surrender. You only get to use the hero once per turn. In this case, we're going to cast haste on our mummies. The combat screen is laid out with hexagons. The flashing unit is the one that is currently under control. You can either skip their turn, or you can move them or take an action. Here we walked our zombies, which doesn't have much movement, so we only got to move two hexagons. You'll notice the mummies can move a lot further because we cast haste. If you right click on the unit you get the details about it. Very handy feature. If the mouse cursor shows a sword it means that the enemy is within range for you to attack them. If the enemy attacks you or you attack an enemy and you don't kill it within one blow and you're in melee range you get to retaliate one time or they get to retaliate one time. The retaliation gets reset the next turn. A turn is considered over when all the creatures have acted. The sound effects are very nice, especially for a DOS game. I'm very impressed. Once you defeat the enemies, it shows you the losses and tells you how much experience you get. Of course, you can lose, too. If you lose, you lose your hero and your entire army, and you cannot get them back. Therefore, sometimes it's good to use the option to either retreat or surrender. In this case, we're going to retreat. This allows you to rehire the hero, but the army is lost. The surrender option allows you to pay gold to the enemy, and you will get your entire army back when you recruit the hero again at your castle. Some units walk, which they have to go around obstacles. Others can fly. And some have a ranged attack. One of the most important options is the ability to save and load a game. Typically after a tough battle you'll be doing this. You can type in any file name you want so you can have multiples. Very handy. If a unit has bad morale, it may lose its turn. If a unit has good luck, it may do extra damage. And then if a unit has good morale, there's a chance that it can do another attack. If you're lazy and you don't want to fight, you can put it on auto and the computer will fight for you. Sometimes it makes you flee though, such as in this example. It knew I was going to get my ass kicked. There's quite a few options you can set for combat. 
Like here you can turn off the grids so that you don't see them. Makes it a prettier battlefield. Once seven days passes, it's considered a new week and creatures increase in growth and a lot of times other resources may replenish. In this example we can recruit more vampires now. Did I mention the developers thought of everything? Heroes are allowed to trade artifacts and even their units back and forth as long as they meet on the map. Great feature for multiple heroes. Some gold mines are haunted. If you decide to go in, you're attacked by ghosts. You must win the battle in order to obtain the gold mine. Eventually, you'll see the opponent's armies scattered across the map. Here is the red player. You can right click and see what type of units they have and decide whether you want to attack them or not. The enemy can cast spells just like you can with your hero. Here we defeated the hero. Shows our experience points. And sometimes you will obtain enemy artifacts. Now's a good time to mention that necromancers gain skeletons for creatures that they kill. The hero disappears from the map when you defeat him. Here we obtained a four-leaf clover and it increased our luck. Sometimes you'll stumble across towns that you can attack. This is a town because it doesn't have any castle walls. It's still guarded, but the enemies are basically free roaming. A castle is a different story. Here we're attacking and you'll notice there's a moat and some turrets. The attacker has a ballista which attacks the castle walls trying to penetrate. The defender has turrets which attack the enemy shooting arrows. Because of the arrows that attack the enemy, it can be a lot harder to break through a castle. You might find yourself losing. You'll notice we broke down some of the walls, but now as we try to get in, we're blocked by the moat. The moat stalls you once you walk into it. The opponent can just sit back and shoot you down. Sometimes castles don't have their moats. In this case, we can just walk straight through the holes in the wall. The defender can walk through the main gate and attack an enemy. And then he can decide to go back in and the door will close. If you have a ranged attack, you can attack over the castle walls. Or if you have a creature that flies, they can fly over the walls. If you kill a unit while it's standing on the door, the door is locked open and you can walk straight across it. If you do capture a new town, you'll notice it shows your color flags and on the right side it'll show multiple towns. We go in here and all we see is a tent, which you can upgrade to a castle if you pay all these resources. And we have a halfling hole where we can recruit some halflings. Pretty pitiful. Once you do upgrade to a castle, you're allowed to create all the building types for that race. There's also some booby traps such as these rogues that are hiding behind this artifact. Kill the rogues to get the artifact. There's some cool transportation features such as way gates which teleport you to another area. There's also teleportation doors. If you've already viewed part of a map, you can actually see the enemy walking around on those parts when it's their turn. A player can be vanquished from the game, which essentially means they lose and they're out of the game. It doesn't matter if you or the computer does the vanquishing. Late in the game, it can be quite tedious attacking certain creatures, such as these wimpy halflings when we have bone dragons. <laughs> 